We are now in module two of the incident management practice certification training. This module is about value streams and processes. Firstly, the syllabus. Here we are going to understand the processes of the practice. Particularly, we will understand the inputs and outputs of the various processes and also key activities in each process and also how to integrate this practice into the organization's value streams. So therefore, when you finish this module, you will be able to explain the two processes of incident management and also explain how this practice is integrated into the organization's service value streams. We begin with understanding some of the basic concepts regarding practices, processes, and service value streams, which are covered already in ITIL foundation. To perform certain tasks, or to respond to particular situations, organizations create service value streams. These are specific combinations of activities and resources of multiple practices, and each one is designed for a particular scenario, meaning each value stream is designed for a particular scenario. Once a value stream is designed, value streams should be subject to continual improvement using techniques such as value stream mapping. Each practice may include one or more processes and activities that may be necessary to fulfill the purpose of that practice. A process is a set of interrelated or interacting activities that transform inputs into outputs. Management practice is a set of organizational resources designed for performing work or accomplishing an objective, meaning these practices are the four dimensions. They include the four dimensions. Thus, not only process, but also organization and people dimension, and of course, when I said process, I also mean process and value streams dimension, and also information and technology dimension, and the partners and supplier dimension. A service value stream is a series of steps an organization undertakes to create and deliver products and services to consumers. So if you notice, the value stream has organization in it. Certain examples of value stream could be a value stream to develop a new application, a value stream to provide customer support to a user or a value stream for uh, gathering requirements of an application or a value stream to service a request from a user. And therefore, gathering requirements from users for a software application could be a sub value stream in the overall software development value stream. Further, Many organizations have been following practice recommendations for various service management practices, such as incident management, change enablement, software development, and, and others. Incident management is one of the most adopted and mature practices. Organizations often start their ITSM journey with incident management. However, the practices have often been adopted and organized in a siloed, isolated manner, just as they were presented in the service management bodies of knowledge. But in reality, a flow of work required to create or restore value for a customer or some other stakeholder is almost never limited to one practice. So we can see this picture here in which a practice includes multiple processes. And the workflow of a service value stream is formed of activities from multiple practices. And practices enable value only in the context of service value stream. We have here in this picture, several practices shown at the bottom. And in the value stream step one, it may include certain activities of practice A. Then in value stream step two, it may include activities of practice B. And in step three, it may include activities of practice N. Also, apart from activities of practice A, the value stream step one may also include activities from practice Y and Z. Now we come to the incident management processes. There are mainly two processes here, incident handling and resolution process and the periodic incident review process. The incident handling and resolution focuses on the handling and resolution of individual incidents from detection to closure. The periodic incident review ensures that the lessons from incident handling and resolution are learned and their approaches to incident management are continually improved. This is the 
process flow for the incident handling and resolution process. We note here that this process includes the following activities, incident detection, incident registration, incident classification, incident diagnosis, incident resolution, and incident closure. Each activity performs some updates to the incident record. Throughout the process, ownership over each incident should be ensured. The ownership may be transferred via the handling and resolution process, but each incident should have a person responsible for it at any time. So we, not, we may not have the same owner all the time throughout this process, but at any given point in time, there should always be an owner available. Also, the communications to stakeholders should be updated whenever there are changes in the status of an incident. We are going to delve into detail on each of these steps or activities of the incident handling and resolution process. For example, we note here the outputs of each activity in this process. Incident records, these are the outputs, incident records, and the same is shown as output from all the activities, as I mentioned earlier. But in some of the activities, we also have the problem investigation requests, change requests, updates to the knowledge base, incident records as well, incident report, that is. So these are also other outputs in some of the other activities. So in this process of incident handling and resolution, we have certain inputs and outputs, and they are are clearly shown and both the input and outputs. The inputs are the monitoring and event data, user queries, configuration information, IT asset information, service catalog, SLAs with consumers and suppliers or partners, capacity and performance information, continuity policies and plans, information security policies and plans, problem records and knowledge base. While some of them are intuitive, maybe easy to acknowledge some of the inputs, but some of them may require additional understanding and or even a bit of memorization because in the exam, you are likely to get questions on which of the following in a multiple choice question that is, which of the below four is an input of the incident handling and resolution process. So you have to remember this entire set. The outputs, as you can see here, are the incident records, problem investigation requests for certain incidents, updates to the knowledge base for every incident, incident status communications for every incident. There may be change requests for specific incidents. And just like the problem investigation request, there will be incident reports, particularly for major incidents and for the others, such as new types of incidents or recurring incidents. And there'll be restored CIs and services for every incident. And in between we have the, the various activities of incident management, which are not shown in this picture. So the incident ownership, as we noted earlier, it is important to identify who has ownership of each incident throughout the incident handling and resolution process. Uh, ownership may be transferred via the handling and resolution process, but each incident should have a person responsible for it at any time. So I had mentioned this even earlier. And similarly, stakeholder communication should be updated whenever there are changes in the status of the incident. Now we go into each of the activities of this process. The first activity is incident detection. We're going to understand both the manually detected and the automatically detected incidents. And these are just two possible options. There may be many other ways to detect incident as well, while these are the major ones. So when it is manually detected by a user, so the user would detect a malfunction in service operation and contacts the service provider service desk through the agreed channels, whatever they are as established. And then the service desk agent performs the initial triaging of the user query for confirming that the query does indeed refer to an incident. If it is automatically detected, then the event is detected by a monitoring system and identified as an incident based on a predefined classification. There may be specific incident models. So we are considering base, basically two incident models here. One is the user-based detection and other is automatic detection. Then we have incident registration for the two models. When it is manually processed through user-detected incidents, then the service agent performs incident registration, adding the available data to the incident record.
and when it is uh, automatic then the record is registered and associated with the ci where the event has been detected predefined technical data is registered if needed a notification is sent to the relevant technical specialists